This is Laurie Moore Moore with Texas Brave and Strong. Tidbits of Texas history you never learned in school. Today's episode is titled, Texas Rangers Stole Powerful Fighting Skills from the Comanche. Standing up on a galloping horse was just one of them. The famous Texas Ranger, John Coffey Hayes, led a company of Texas Frontier Rangers whose reputation surpassed those of all others. The key to the success of Hayes Rangers was that they learned to fight like the Comanche Indians who were their primary foe. Once Spanish horses were introduced to the Great Plains in the 1500s, the Comanche, previously hunting and fighting on foot, dedicated themselves to perfecting their horsemanship. Hunting the bison, the primary resource for their existence, became easier, and they left their Shoshone relatives, abandoned farming, and focused on how to fight on horseback. Superior fighting skills then allowed them to plunder food from agricultural Indians. These riding and fighting skills were powerful enough to dominate the Lipan Apache in their southern plains homeland and stop the incursion of the French, Spanish, and Mexicans into the Great Plains area. In the early 1800s, plagued by Comanche raids in northern Mexico, the Mexican government offered Anglo settlers land for homesteads in what ultimately became Texas. The goal was to create a buffer area protecting populated Mexico from Comanche raids. When Anglo settlers arrived, the Comanche became the scourge of the settlers. Comanche warriors raided, burned, murdered, raped, and captured as slaves so many settlers that when Texas earned its independence from Mexico, the Republic of Texas realized it had to fund and raise companies of mounted men who would range across the southwestern Texas plains protecting settlers. In 1843, John Coffey Hayes was tapped to create an initial group of volunteer rangers to patrol the plains, serving for 12 months. Following the Texas Revolution, Hayes had built his reputation participating in a volunteer ranger company headed by Erastus Deaf Smith. Befriended by a lip an Apache chief named Flacco, Hayes had gained insights into what made the Comanche such formidable foes. Comanche braves used their horses to great advantage. Their mustangs were small but hardy. Grazing was plentiful at the Indians' campgrounds north of the Texas border. In contrast, grazing was sparse in much of the southwestern plains, meaning settlers' horses had less endurance. Comanche traveled with extra horses. If pursued, they changed to fresh mounts and easily outpaced and outlasted those in pursuit, often traveling around the clock. Comanche were far-ranging fighters who preferred to travel and raid during full and new moons. Settlers came to call these Comanche moons. Their horsemanship was exceptional. They could stand on their galloping horses, When firing guns or shooting arrows, a warrior could lay along the side of his horse with only a foot and a hand to be seen and fire under the horse's neck, then rise and reverse to the other side to repeat the feat. While galloping at full speed, a warrior could lean down, pick up something as small as a coin from the ground. To counter repeating guns, that could rapid-fire as many as six shots. The Comanche developed a technique for holding a large number of arrows that could be shot in rapid succession. These skills were often employed in running battles. Comanche developed specific warfare strategies, which were unlike the European fighting techniques of the Anglos. The lineup in battle was lances in front, guns in the center, boys in the rear. One assumed all were also armed with bows and arrows. One frequent strategy was a feint or trick. Open field fighters, they would charge. When the enemy counterattacked, the Comanche would fall back in the center. When their foe countercharged, Comanche braves concealed on the sides would sweep in to flank the enemy. In addition, they attacked with blood-curdling screams, painted faces, 
and showed no mercy. Hayes believed that to defeat the Comanche, his rangers would have to match or beat them in horsemanship, marksmanship, and use some of their fighting strategies. That meant intensive training. His rangers were either on patrol or training. After three or four months, they could duplicate Comanche riding techniques, and their marksmanship was excellent. Despite the fact that the huge number of constant Comanche raids was resulting in a high death toll for settlers and a long list of kidnapped victims, in 1843 or 1844, there was a strange but peaceful event in San Antonio. Strange, especially given the context of bloody attacks by the Comanche. John Coffee Hayes and his Texas Rangers took part in a competition of horsemanship featuring 50 Mexican vaqueros and the same number of supposedly peace-seeking Comanche led by Chief Buffalo Hump. As best I can determine, prizes went to one ranger, one vaquero, and one Comanche brave. Most important, the contest demonstrated that John Coffee Hayes's Texas Rangers were the equal of the Comanche in trick riding and in marksmanship from a galloping horse. As other ranger companies were formed, Hayes' training program was often adopted, making the Texas Rangers unique in their fighting ability. During the Civil War, Texas troops were referred to as the Confederate Shock Troops, known for amazing horsemanship and effective shooting. They rode into battle to the sound of unnerving yells, much like those of the Comanche, from whom they had stolen important fighting skills. This has been Laurie Moore Moore with Texas Brave and Strong, the best little podcast in Texas. New episodes twice each month. Find Texas Brave and Strong on most major podcast sites and on my website, lauriemoremore.com. Be sure to check out my Texas historical novel, Gone to Dallas, The Storekeeper, 1856 to 1861. Thanks for listening. Y'all come back.